Hi folks and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to look at how to illustrate nanofiber yarns using geometry nodes. We'll look at how to pack fibers together into simple yarns first, then look at how to add procedural twists to them, and then finally how to create illustrations showing any hierarchical structuring. So let's get started with the simplest case, a yarn with multiple close packed fibers bundled together. Add a bezier curve, come to geometry nodes and create a new node tree. Add a curve to mesh node and enable fill caps. Look for a curve circle node and plug that into the curve profile input. To make a hexagonally close packed bundle of fibers, we're going to change the circle resolution here to six and this should create a hexagonal profile. We're going to use this hexagonal profile to instance six further circles on the vertices of the hexagon to create six further fibers. Connect an instance on points node after the curve circle, duplicate the curve circle and plug that in as the instance object for the instance on points. Take the radius value for this second curve circle and connect it to the group input and call this parameter the fiber radius. So this parameter will control the radius of each individual fiber in the yarn. So from simple geometry, we know that the first curve hexagon needs to have a radius of two times fiber radius in order for our close packing to happen properly. So from the fiber radius, add a math node, set it to multiply, times it by two, and plug that into the radius of the first curve circle. We can see that we're currently pulling an error on the curve to mesh operation because it's receiving a bunch of instances, which it doesn't like. So look for a realize instances node and plug that in between the instance and points and curve to mesh. So now we have a profile of six fibers. Make sure to set the resolution of the second curve circle to something that is not six so that we can actually get individual fibers. Since we expose the fiber radius input, we can come to the geometry nodes modifier tab and toggle the fiber radius we now need to add the central fiber, which is currently missing. Duplicate the curve to mesh node and take the original input geometry, which is our Bezier curve and connect it to the curve input. Take the same curve circle that we used to create the peripheral fibers and plug that into the profile curve and add a join geometry node and connect the second curve to mesh into the join geometry and that creates our central fiber as well. So just for some housekeeping, I'm going to go ahead and frame this top one with control J and rename this frame core fiber and all of these nodes underneath the peripheral fibers. But what if I want to create something with a much more random packing arrangement instead? Let's go ahead and duplicate this fiber object that we've just created, hide the original one, click this number two here so that I duplicate this entire node setup and I'm going to call this random packed fibers. Go ahead and delete the curve circle node as well as the multiply node Instead, look for a mesh circle node, and this time I'm going to plug the radius to the group input and call this the yarn radius. Set the fill type to Engon, the vertices to 16. Add a distribute points on faces node, set it to Poisson disk, and connect the mesh circle to its input. Connect the output of this distribute points on faces to the instance on points, and you can see what this creates is a random bundle of fibers. Let's bring down the yarn radius so that they pack them all together. Bring up the minimum distance of the porcelain disc to something non-zero. This is so that the fibers do not start overlapping with each other. I'll set it to 0.1. Now to increase the amount of fibers that are packed together, simply bring up the density max and that should populate the entire yarn with more fibers. You can also play with the seed value to get different arrangements of fibers in the yarn. Now let's look at how to add a little twist to the yarn. Let's come back to our simple hexagonally packed yarn. Look for a resample curve node and set the count to something high, such as 100. A set curve tilt node and place it immediately afterwards. The set curve tilt node allows you to control the rotation of the curve, but if I change the tilt value right now, it rotates the whole bundle collectively. Instead, we want to assign different rotations as we move along the length of the yarn. So add a spline parameter node and an attribute statistic node. Keep the attribute statistic to float point. Connect the output from the resample curve node into the geometry input of the attribute statistic. You can either use the factor of the length. I'm going to take the length output of the spline parameter and connect that into the attribute input. Use the max output and connect a math node. Set the math node to multiply. Connect the second value of the multiply node to the group input and name that parameter rotations 
per unit length. This gives the maximum rotations needed for a given length of curve. Next, look for a map range node. Connect the factor output from the spline parameter into the value input for the map range. Take the output of that multiply operation from before and plug that into the to max socket. Make sure clamp is unticked and take the result and plug it into the tilt value. So now, by changing the total number of rotations per unit length, we can toggle that to add more or less rotations along the yarn. To change the overall shape of the yarn, select the yarn and just tab into edit mode. This will open up the option to edit the spline handles for the bezier curve. If I move the end point of the yarn in the x or y directions, I can extend the yarn and bend the yarn around. Notice that the extended bit of yarn automatically adds further rotations rather than stretching the existing rotations because we procedurally calculated the twist based on a set rotations per unit length value. Now for the last bit, which is how to illustrate hierarchical structures, I'm going to expand the central fiber to create a zoomed in effect. I'll first need to peel away all of these outer fibers that surround it. So add a trim curve node and place it in the node tree where we generated the outer peripheral fibers. So let's add that here before the curve to mesh operation. Now by bringing down the end value, I can peel away or trim away those outer fibers so we can see what's happening with the core a bit more. Next, let's zoom in into the core fiber, add a set curve radius node and plug that into the top branch that deals with the core fiber. Before the curve to mesh operation, add a spline parameter node, a float curve node and a map range node. Take the factor outputs from the spline parameter into the value Take the float curve and plug that into the map range and take the result and plug that into the radius value. I'm using the factor, which varies from zero to one to define how the curve radius varies along its length. Right now, the float curve is saying that I want this radius to vary linearly from zero to one, but I can create new spline points along the curve, pull it around to create custom profiles. I can control the, the range over which this radius value actually changes using the map range by toggling the two max value and also the two min, so long as it fits the radius of the fiber as it exits this bundle where we've trimmed away. Of course, you're not limited to just a zoom in of the single cylinder in the core. You could take a profile curve for the six fibers, create a new bundle inside of the original bundle of fibers and expand that. But I'll leave that to you to experiment and try out. But besides that, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed following along and learned something new. Please leave a like and a comment if you found it useful, subscribe for more content, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye for now.